Hey, what's up guys? It's Tech Infusion and welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be taking a look at Samsung's newest flagship phone, the Galaxy S10 Plus. Now, many people believe that Samsung makes the best phone on the market and depending on who you talk to, this opinion may or may not be true. However, it goes without saying that the S10 Plus is definitely a quality device that beats most of its competitors on the market today. Let's go ahead and take a look at it. Before we begin, I'd like to thank Verizon for making this video possible by sending out the Galaxy S10 Plus for a review. If you've never experienced the exceptional cell service Verizon offers, you need to switch and try it today. I'm not just saying this, I've been a long-term customer for over five years and couldn't be happier with the coverage I'm getting. Links will be in the description below. The S10 Plus looks and feels very similar to the S9 Plus, but this updated model brings many improvements. The base model is completely covered in Gorilla Glass 6, while the 512GB and 1TB upgraded option has ceramic on the back. The factory colors are prism white, black, and green, and while I could only see myself using the black color personally, the other colors may suit your preference more. The back of the phone has a really sleek look and holds a triple lens camera. What you won't find on the back is a fingerprint sensor because they have moved it to under the display, which we'll talk more on later. The whole phone is outlined in an aluminum border similar to past Samsung devices and most other phones on the market as well. We have our standard button layout with the annoying Bixby button right under the volume buttons as per usual. However, it can be changed to launch Google Assistant instead of Bixby, which I would recommend doing right when you get the phone. Now, being an all glass phone, the S10 Plus is not super durable when it comes to drops, but really that's how every glass phone on the market is nowadays. It's got a nice feel in the hands that makes you feel like you're getting what you paid for. The device has a waterproof rating of IP68, which means if you drop it in the pool, you shouldn't have to worry about water damage. Now, the biggest difference between the S10 and the S9 is the display. Turn it on and you'll quickly see what I'm talking about. The S10 Plus has a screen to body ratio of 88%, which is more than most phones we're seeing today. And that is thanks to the hole punch display Samsung opted to go with here. The screen is a 6.4 inch Quad HD Plus AMOLED display that looks absolutely gorgeous while watching videos and playing games. As with past Samsung flagships, the Galaxy S10 Plus has one of the nicest displays on any phone I've ever used. And typically, Galaxy devices have a really nice color gamut with a very saturated display, and nothing has changed here on the S10 Plus. Now, when it comes to daily use and performance of the S10 Plus, it's a really fast phone and runs at great speeds for gaming and switching between multiple apps. The S10 Plus is equipped with an octa-core CPU that is paired up with 8GB of RAM and upgradable up to 12GB of RAM, which is absolutely crazy for a phone. I'm not sure why you would need that or ever even use it, but if you need it, it's there and you can get it, which is nice. The S10 Plus runs Samsung's new One UI, which a lot of people are hating on. I personally enjoyed using it and navigating around the device. It's laid out well and is super fast between switching apps and multitasking. And while playing popular games like Fortnite and PUBG, it had no issue keeping up and felt very smooth. While it doesn't quite perform as well as the iPhone XS Max, it's getting pretty close and I really can't complain. It's good to see that we still have a headphone jack on the S10. I don't really ever use it that much, but I have been places with my iPhone 10 where I wanted to play music through my headphone jack, but then I quickly realized that I do not have one anymore. So the fact that the S10 does have one on it is really nice so that I don't have to worry about that problem. The speakers on the S10 sound good and get very loud. I still think that the iPhone speakers sound better and are more crisp, however the S10 gets louder and seems to have a little bit better of a stereo presence. The S10 Plus has joined the 5 camera family with its triple camera setup on the back and two on the front. As normal, you have an ultra wide lens, which is a 16 megapixel wide angle view, a standard 12 megapixel lens, and a 12 megapixel telephoto lens, which has two times optical zoom. During my testing, walking around and taking various pictures with the S10 Plus, I really can't complain. This device pushes out great photos with very nice dynamic range. However, the telephoto lens seems to not be as sharp as the other two lenses. I'm not sure why this is, but the edges just seem to be a little bit more blurry in the photos. When it comes to videos, the S10 Plus has this feature called Steady Shot, which uses a software-based stabilization to smooth out your shaky footage. While walking with it, I definitely noticed it being more stable than most phones, but it's still not quite as impressive as the GoPro Hero 7. Not that I was expecting it to be smoother, I'm just wanting to say that the S10 Plus is not going to replace a GoPro or gimbals anytime soon. 
The front two cameras are good. The primary camera has a 10 megapixel sensor, while the secondary, which is used for depth sensing, is 8 megapixels. I really liked the colors of the front facing cameras, and skin tones look natural. The live focus mode does a great job with figuring out what is foreground and what is background. Now let's talk about possibly the most exciting feature on this device, which is the under display fingerprint reader, otherwise known as the ultrasonic fingerprint scanner. It's really cool to see phones begin to implement this as it frees up the back of the phone by hiding it under the display. It does seem that the S10 Plus is a little bit pickier when it comes to unlocking your phone with a fingerprint reader, but I would say it's probably worked about 90% of the time for me. Most of the issues I was having with it was before I trained my finger exactly where the reader was, so I'd often place my finger in the wrong area. But once I got used to the location of the reader, it worked almost every time without fail. Now, it does seem a little bit slower than most fingerprint readers. However, that doesn't really bother me because one, it's under the display, which is really cool. And two, half of a second longer waiting for an unlock doesn't really bother me, but it may aggravate you if you're expecting a lightning fast unlock. The battery life on the S10 Plus is really good. With a fair amount of use, I was able to use it all day and still have about 20% left. Obviously it will fluctuate depending on what you're doing with the device, but for just normal use, I was super impressed. It can quick charge via USB-C or placed on a wireless charger. And let's say you have another device that needs a charge. The S10 Plus actually has a wireless power share feature that lets you place another Qi compatible device on the back of your phone and it begins charging. Now this is really cool because let's say your Galaxy Buds or your friend's phone is about to die, you can just flip over your S10 and charge it right up. Now these are all the features that really add up to give you that premium feel of owning a Galaxy S10 Plus. Overall, I really do think that the S10 Plus is one of the top three phones on the market. The display is the best I've ever used on any phone and makes my iPhone 10 OLED screen look like nothing special. It doesn't quite outperform the iPhone XS Max when it comes to gaming and performance, but I feel like the gap is just so small that it really doesn't make a difference for me. Now all the cameras on the S10 Plus are really awesome, but if you're looking for a phone dedicated to taking good pictures, I'd probably go with the Google Pixel because I do feel as if those take better photos all around. The experience I've had with the S10 Plus has been amazing. Everything feels very polished and the helpful features like power sharing only make it even easier to use this device. I will say it's hard to recommend a phone nowadays when everything's getting so expensive, but if you're already looking to spend more than $1,000 on a phone, the Galaxy S10 Plus would be the device I would purchase personally. Anyways guys, that's all I have to say about this device. Let me know in the comments below what you think about the S10 Plus. As always, if you enjoyed this video or found it helpful in any way, please remember to leave a like and don't forget to comment, subscribe, and hit that bell icon so you don't miss my next video. I hope you have a great rest of your day and until next time guys, peace out.